All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to a new episode of Maxim Outdoors. This week, I am taking you to a brand new state, Maryland, of course. Come with me as we hike to the highest point in this state, Hoy Crest. All right, let's go. All right, everybody, welcome back to an all new episode of Maxim Outdoors. And I will be taking you to not only one, but two new states in this episode. Uh, as you've probably already seen in the title and the thumbnail, we will be heading up to the highest point here in Maryland. But in order to get there, we are currently standing here in beautiful West Virginia. And uh, excuse the traffic noise, I'm basically standing along a very busy two lane road here. But in order to get to the high point, we're gonna have to climb up basically the side of this mountain here. So, like I said, sorry about the traffic noises. We'll be heading up the side of this hill, gaining about 700 feet in elevation. It's only one mile up and of course one mile down. So uh, it should be uh, an interesting day. It's March 10th. It's uh, spitting rain and snowing and sleet and everything else on me. Kind of debated on even coming out today, but uh, hey, it beats sitting around on the couch. So. Anyway, we're going to hit the trail, get away from all this uh, road noise, and check out the highest point in Maryland, Hoy Crest. Come along with me. All right, well, we will say goodbye to the road for about an hour or so, and hello to the trail. As you can see, this looks like this was probably an old logging road of some sort back in the day, and uh, they also have these HPs to signify high point along the trail here. So we'll keep gaining elevation. I did do this trail one other time before and uh, you know, you, you see one mile and you think it's not too bad, but it's pretty much straight uphill the entire way. And another little interesting fact about this area is uh, we are currently hiking within Monongahela National Forest here in West Virginia. And at the top, there is a sort of like obelisk or state marker that uh, it, it's been about three years since I've been here so it's a little fuzzy in my mind how we're gonna try to find it but there's like a state marker at the tippy top of the mountain here that it's kind of hidden in the woods so we'll see if we can uh, spot that today but yeah I'll show you some of the sights along the way here as we head up to the highest point in Maryland Hoy Crest
Well, if this isn't uh, mountain weather, I don't know what is. This is by far my favorite kind of weather to hike in. A little bit drizzly, a little bit cold, but nothing too crazy. And uh, if we pan to the right here, you get a pretty interesting view of a deforested area here along Backbone Mountain. You can see there's a very nice uh, glass house there up on the hill. I don't remember that being there as well as one in the distance, but uh, looks like they cut all this down and you can see some windmills as well through the fog there in the distance. But yeah, absolutely perfect morning. Like I said, I was really debating on coming out here and hiking today or not. They were basically calling for a 100% chance of rain, but so far so good. But I did wanna show you guys this view here. It's pretty interesting. So yeah, we're gonna continue climbing up to Hoy Crest now. I'll tell you a little bit more of that when we get up a little higher here. Yeah, sometimes whenever you're on the trail, you forget to turn around and look behind you every once in a while, but I almost miss this amazing view here of the rolling hills here in West Virginia. You can see uh, that hill in the distance there looks like it's getting logged out as well. So who knows what they're doing here. Uh, been hiking along this fence now for about uh, 10 minutes or so. Don't know, maybe they'll build housing or something here since this is obviously all privately owned. But uh, yeah, we're continuing on and eventually we will be at the top here. So yeah, just wanted to show you this pretty awesome view looking back over Maryland and West Virginia. Well, the higher we get on the trail, the better the views are. So we're probably only a quarter mile up the side of this uh, backbone mountain here, but check out these views. As you can see, we're still kind of following along the fence line here, this private property, but uh, in just a couple feet, there is a sign that will uh, cut that way, I'm guessing. But yeah, so many people stay home and opt not to hike on days like this, but why wouldn't you? I mean, you won't get views like this on a clear sunny day as the rain starts uh, coming down on me. So yeah, I'm gonna finish up this little time lapse. I couldn't pass this view up and uh, we're gonna continue on up. You can kind of see the tree line at the top there as well as this really cool mossy forest here behind me. So awesome views all around. All right, well, just a couple steps away from this incredible viewpoint, I did find two pretty unique trees. And uh, if you're new to this channel, I tried to do an ID or two for each and every one of my videos. And this week, it uh, looks like we got two pretty unique tree species here. Right here, this is a type of birch. And uh, a lot of people know birch trees for their, their paper birch variant, which is, uh, you know, the white papery trees that you see along the roads and in bogs and swamps and stuff like that but this is actually a sweet birch it's uh in the same family as you can tell very soft papery uh bark really good for kindling if you're trying to start a fire obviously not on days like this but you can see the bark is just peeling right off and uh that's a good indicator as well as the smoothness of this tree so uh this is a sweet birch as you can see pretty uh pretty small but a very tall tree and then on my right hand side here this is uh, one of my favorite trees. This is a black cherry. And uh, one thing I learned about these is the easiest way to identify it that I will always remember is uh, people identify the bark as like frosted flakes. Uh, you can pick them off and uh, you know, it's kind of 
reminiscent of a frosted flakes it's got a really rough uh flaky bark to it but yeah so we got a black cherry here and a sweet birch there so two new ids for the channel and i believe that gets us up to like 22 ids for the year so far and one other note i should make about the black cherry although it's not going to coincide too well with this uh black birch being in front of me so we got a black birch and a black cherry obviously both very dark trees uh black cherries usually stand out way uh more visible than any other tree i mean you can see there's a black cherry in front of me here as well as a bunch there in the distance they're way darker than uh, pretty much any other tree you'll see in the forest you got a lot of these like browns and grays and then boom black cherry boom black cherry boom black cherry so a uh, very distinct tree to pick out of the forest very easy to uh you know if you're a, a noob if, you, if you're not too familiar with trees black cherries are really good uh trees to start out with to, to learn just because of the bark and uh how dark they are so all right and also in the springtime, they uh, actually have black cherries on them. Not the kind you buy from the supermarket, but uh, they do have cherries on them. <laughs> All right, well, we got two IDs down for the day already. So uh, why not make it a third with this guy behind me here? As you can see, this has uh, a lot of similar characteristics to the tree that we seen earlier, the black birch. So uh, any guesses what this might be out there? Well, if you guessed a yellow birch, you would be right. As you can see, a lot of the same characteristics, very uh, peely bark that is great to use for uh, kindling and fire starter as well as a very smooth, slippery bark. And this one's pretty interesting, it caught my eye because it looks like a giant earthworm kind of just uh, crawling through the soil here. So very interesting looking uh, yellow birch here. And uh, another little fact is uh, these guys are known for the sap and the syrup. A lot of people prefer birch syrup over maple syrup. So yeah, pretty interesting look at uh, a yellow birch and it's octopus-like root system and we're uh getting to the top here you can see the ridge line it's kind of like the uh the backbone to backbone mountain so we'll be there in just a minute All right, and here we are, officially at the end of the trail. And in just a couple steps here, I will officially be the highest person naturally in Maryland. So uh, here is the signage stating that Hoy Crest is in fact the highest point here along Backbone Mountain, 300 or 3,360 feet above sea level. And just like that, highest person in Maryland. So uh, here is the view that you are rewarded with once you get to the top here of uh, this Hoy Crest Trail, looking out over West Virginia, ironically. And uh, in the distance there, you can see some snow-capped mountains way in the distance, probably about 30 miles away, as it uh, looks like a rainstorm is blowing in. So uh, that leads me to the next thing. If you're ever sitting at home on the couch debating on, you know, going out and doing something like this or staying home, go do it. Uh, it was supposed to be 100% chance of precipitation, icy, snowy, just didn't sound good at all. I debated it for about a week coming out here, believe it or not. And uh, now I'm very, very glad I did. So one other thing I do want to mention is uh, this bench here was do donated by the High Pointers Foundation. Um, I've been part of the High Pointers group for probably about five years now, and they do excellent work. They have like yearly uh, events at High Points. I think they just did one in Pennsylvania two years ago. But uh, if you guys want to learn more about high pointing, check out their website. And uh, they also have a really good Facebook page that uh, you can learn a lot about uh, the different state high points. So we're going to sign the, uh, the registry here. And we will head on down to the state park or the uh, 
the state marker, the uh, West Virginia state marker that I was talking about earlier. And that'll wrap up today. So one last look here at this beautiful overlook before we descend on back down, unless we get blown away. All right, well, I might have spoken a little too soon about having uh, nice weather out here because it looks like it's about to absolutely dump on me right now. But uh, did want to bring up one other thing that uh, maybe a few folks had a question on. So this is obviously known as Hoy Crest, but I called it Backbone Mountain a few times as well throughout this video. So long story short, Backbone Mountain is a long mountain range. I'll put a picture down here for you. that runs through Maryland and West Virginia. The highest point in Maryland happens to be kind of like the middle of the mountain. So uh, Backbone Mountain actually extends down into West Virginia and there's actually a higher peak on Backbone Mountain just a couple miles uh, south of here. So if there's any confusion about that, that's the reason why uh, I call it Backbone Mountain as well as Hoy Crest. So yeah, that's three high points down for the channel. We did a uh, mount, a Mount Davis, uh, a hill, Campbell Hill, and now we did a crest here at Hoy Crest. So uh, we'll see what uh, high point we head to next. But like I said, we got one other stop. We're going to go check out the, uh, the state marker here, just uh, a few hundred feet in front of me. All right, well, we are saying goodbye to the highest point here in Maryland. Uh, very Appalachian Trail feels out here today. Kind of reminds me of Mount Rogers a bit. But uh, yeah, we're going to be making one more stop here and checking out the state markers of Maryland and West Virginia just a couple feet away. Uh, the rain has picked up, as you can see, and it feels like it's gotten colder. So a uh, little interesting thing about the uh, the registry, nobody signed that in uh, in four days. So. This trail obviously doesn't get much use, and uh, I'm guessing it won't get too much use on a day like this. So, definitely had this place all to myself, and uh, the state marker is up on top of this rock pile here. So, wish me luck here in the icy rain. All right, well, <laughs> the uh, trail, if you want to call it that, to get up to the marker was uh, was fun. As you can see, had to kind of bushwhack my way through some of these little saplings and over all these uh, slippery rocks. But there it is. That is the Maryland-West Virginia state border. Try to get a little closer. Hopefully, we're not uh, IDing any any rattlesnakes today so far so good probably a little cool for them these rocks are just extremely slippery <laughs> and uh yeah hopefully that was worth it as you can see we are on the maryland side right now 1910 when this was placed nowadays we have things like gps's and satellites that you don't need to put these giant stones in the middle of the woods but yeah just think about the guys that had to come out here back in the early 1900s to to put this on top of a, a mountain, basically. All right, well, one last look here from literally the tippy top of Backbone Mountain. And here is uh, another side of the state marker. As you can see, number three, I'm guessing this is like the third corner of uh, the markings between Maryland in West Virginia, you could see some of the names. I'm not sure if those are the folks that came up to this mountain and placed this marker or not, but uh, yeah, it's gonna wrap things up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, 
high point number three here with me, Hoy Crest, as I'm uh, literally in the middle of an ice storm on top of uh, a bunch of boulders. So <laughs> that's gonna wrap it up. If you like this video, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button if you can, like the video, leave me a comment, check me out on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, yeah, thanks for uh, watching this far. It means a lot and uh, we will see you from uh, who knows where next week. All right, guys, stay safe out there.